Hello, hello, hello to all my replay viewers. Thank you for your likes, your comments, and your shares. This is author, evangelist, life coach, Shakisha Etnis, coming by to share a word of encourage, encouragement with you. Um, if you can, please invite your followers, invite your followers, invite your followers. Thank you for being my number one supporters. I am off the evangelist life coach Shakisha Etnis. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you for chiming in. I am off the evangelist life coach Shakisha Etnis. I wanted to come by and give you a word of encouragement on today. I pray that this blesses you in such a way that it will cause you to make a change. Make that change. As Michael Jackson says, make that change. It is time for us to make a change. It is time for us to be the change. Woo, check it up, oh, see ya. And no longer waiting around, sitting around waiting for the change. Amen. We have to become exactly what we want. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So I, again, thank you for joining off the Evangelist Life Coach Shakisha Etnis. If you feel that I am a blessing to you in any shape, form, or fashion, will you please share out this broadcast with your supporters, with your followers, because guess what? I don't know them, but I know you. The only way for me to be connected to them, you will have to share me with them, all right? So thank you, thank you, thank you again for joining off the evangelist like Coach Shakisha Etnis. I am coming by today to share a word of encouragement with you and pray that it does something to you in such a way that it will cause you to change your habits, change uh, not necessarily change your beliefs, but change. Hello. Hello, best lady. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. I see you, Sister Carlene. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining, ladies. Something was really on my heart this morning as I was watching someone else's um broadcast. And because it touched me, I felt the need to share. Um, first of all, I want to reintroduce myself to those that may not know me that will come in and catch this replay. Thank you, Tabitha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. If you can, please share out this broadcast. I think it will be a blessing to others. Please let me know if you can't see me good, if you can't hear me good. Um, I tried to come on and do a voiceover, but I didn't feel like I had, um, I felt like I lost reception. So I needed to make things happen today. Amen. Make that change. I'm making some changes in my broadcast going forward. Hello, Miss McBride. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Sister Carlene. I truly appreciate you and your presence. You all, thank you for gracing me with your presence on this morning. I am off the evangelist life coach, Keisha Atness, and I am coming by today to share a word. And, and I want to say before I get started, thank you for that share, Sister Carlene. I want to say thank you, Tabitha. Good morning to you, beautiful. I want to say before I get started, whenever I share a testimony with you, please hear me. Whenever I share a testimony with you, Never, please never think that I'm, I'm um, uh, glorifying the enemy. If I'm sharing something with you that sounds like I'm glorifying the enemy, I'm not. All right. I think I think that's safe to say that you already know that. But I want to make that clear. OK, so I'm coming by today and my title is Make That Change because I was thinking about my mom as I was watching someone else's broadcast. And as I was watching the broadcast, I, I don't know why this thought came to my mind, but I knew it had to be God because I'm like, why am I thinking about that? And instantly I felt the need to share. So I remember my mom being, it's going to be, a, I'm going to try to make it plain and simple. Hello, Lawanda. Thank you for joining. Again, if you can, please shout this broadcast. I'm off the evangelist like Coach Shakisha Etnis. And thank you for all my replay viewers. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for your comments, your likes, and your shares. I am coming by today to share something with you that I think will bless you tremendously. My deceased mom, my beloved mother, I remember when she went in treatment. She went in treatment. I am 30, I am 43. I was about to say 34. <laughs> I am 43. During this time, I was 14. I was 14. Okay. So, um, who, thank you, Father. Mm. 
Can I just pray for a second? Because I don't want to cry. Father God, I thank you. I thank you. I bless your holy name. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad if they're in it, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for meeting us where we are, but not leaving us there, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for decreasing me and increasing you, Lord God. Speak through my vocal cords like only you can. Touch my heart. Purify me, Lord God. Cleanse me. Set me free. Deliver me from anything that is not like you, of you or pleasing in your sight, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing those that will even come, Lord God, and those that are already here, Lord God. I ask you to anoint them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord God. I thank you for the, the, pur the purpose and the plan for their lives, Lord God. Now anoint our ears that we may hear Hear what you say, Lord God, and anoint my mouth for me to speak the words that you will have me to speak right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your presence, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for gracing us, Lord God, because you said with two or three are uh, gathering agreements, you are in the midst. So, Daddy, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord God. And we say, have your way, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. None of me, all of you, less of me, more of you. Have your way, Father. Use me as your instrument, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hold it up, Oshia. Ooh, how did I buy Shia? Every time I think about my mom, you know, it just brings me to tears because a memory is, is, it, it, a memory is, is, you can have good memories that, that, that can thrust you out into, you know, just, just, uh, 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 great things and then you can have bad memories that can handicap you and and keep you just locked in and I just want to say that you know I, I when I think about my mom and I think about the things that she endured and she's overcome I I know that I'm living on her legacy come on somebody I'm living on her legacy oh she can a level see what do I mean because her leg the leg that she once walked on I'm living it on I'm living on it guess what and it allows me to it gives me an upper hand it gives me a boost for me to be able to see what it is that I need to see. I hope I didn't lose you. So I thank God for my mother's legacy. The leg that she once stood on is the, the leg that she once walked out. I'm standing on and it helps me to be able to see the things that I need to see. Amen. I pray that you got that because you're standing on someone's legacy. It's your mother, your father, your sister or your brother. Somebody left something for you to be able to stand on, for you to be able to embrace, for you to be able to get a, a upper hand on so you can be able to walk it out even further i hope i didn't lose you with that being said i wanted to come by and share something with you as it was dropped into my heart as i was watching someone else's broadcast i was watching someone else's broadcast this morning and i and i felt the need to share that um when my mom went in treatment let's just get to the point when my mom went in treatment i remember my mother doing 31 days in treatment right and i remember sending my mother a 10 dollar money order i remember sending my mother a $10 money order. I remember when my mom got out, she had mail and she began to go through her mail and she realized that I sent her a $10 money order that she never cashed. We stayed on Martin Luther King, which was across the street, which was Allen Temple Apartments, which was across the street from Winn-Dixie Plaza. And I can remember my mom dropping to her knees in the middle of the parking lot. I didn't understand what she was doing. I could still see what she had on. I remember my mom dropping to her knees and she began to pray. And the prayer went something similar to this. She said, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get my children. She said, but I know welfare, a welfare check is not going to do it. And a job is not going to do it. I'm, there, I'm not going to be able to get them back as quickly as I want to get my children back off a welfare check or off a job. She said, and I know what I'm about to do is not what you will want me to do, but I do ask you for your protection in the midst of my foolishness. All right. 
I, I need you to hear me. She said, the decision that I'm about to make, I know is wrong, but God, I ask you to cover me. I ask you to keep me in perfect peace. I ask you to protect me from all hurt, harm, and danger. I see you, Miss Robinson. Thank you for joining. And she began to pray. And when she got, when she dropped to her knees, I instantly dropped to my knees with my mother. I touched and agreed with her prayer, not knowing what was on her mind, best lady. Thank you for being here. And I remember her going to a store, a check cash in place in the plaza, and she went and cashed that $10 money order. And I remember my mother coming out and we getting on the bus. And we went to Bowen Homes to buy a crack rock. Did you hear what I just said? This message isn't for everybody, but for the few that it's for, I pray that it blesses you. I see you, Lorenzo. Pastor Lorenzo, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. So I'm going to repeat what I just said for those that's just chiming in. I remember my mother being in treatment for 31 days. And when my mother came out of treatment, she and I was on Martin Luther King across the street from Allen Temple Apartments where we stayed. We was in Winn-Dixie Plaza parking lot. I'm not glorifying the enemy. I'm just showing you. I'm just telling you her testimony from my perspective and how it is making an impact on my life today. I hope you're with me. So don't think I'm glorifying the enemy because in the end, God, God gets the glory. Amen. So my mom realized she was going through her mail and she realized <laughs> I had sent her a $10 money order that she had never cashed while she was in treatment. She, she dropped to her knees and she began to pray a prayer similar as this. She said, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get my children back, but I know a welfare check can't get them back quick enough. And I know that a job is not going to get me back my children quick enough, but, and I also know what I'm about to do is not pleasing to you. And it's not something that you will want me to do. But Lord, I ask you for your protection. I ask you to cover me. I ask you to keep me. Because what I'm about to do, I know it's wrong. My mother went into the check cashing place, cashed a check of $10. I remember her, she and I getting on the bus. We probably had a martyr card or some tokens. And we got on the bus and we went to Born Homes for her to purchase a crack rock. I know some of you are saying, well, did she purchase it to use it? No, she purchased it to sell it. Again, I'm not going to find an enemy. I just want to show you something. Thank you, Brotney, for, for joining. Brotney has history with me, so he can somewhat know what I'm talking about. So I want to say this. When my mother went, Sister Carlene, when my mother went, Pastor Lorenzo, to get this crack rock, which was $10. And when she broke it down, it was, it made $40. And this sound crazy. What I'm saying, I don't know why I'm saying what I'm saying, but I know God led me to share this. Miss Dunn, thank you for joining. And I was scared out my mind because I'm like, what is she doing? Is she about to get high? You know, after having 30 days clean, my mother looked at me and she said, I'm about to get everything out of that dope game. Everything that I put in it, I'm about to get it back out of it because I got to get my children back. I hope this bless somebody. Am I telling you to go out there and sell dope, Miss Maria? Of course not. Am I telling you to glorify the enemy? Of course not. But what I am about to tell you that sometimes your, the, the, your, the thing that you want the most, it, 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 it's, it's a risk factor in it. It's a risk factor in it. And you don't know how you're going to do it, but you, 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 you say, God, re regardless of how I see myself right now, I know that I need, I need something and I need to step out on faith. My mother said, I'm dead wrong for what I'm about to do. But what I need, I need from you, God, is to protect me in this. Because I know what I'm doing is wrong. I know I can go to jail. I know I can lose my kids forever, but I'm trying something. Now, I'm not telling you to try this. Are you hearing me? I hope you get this. I'm going to say that again. I'm not telling you to go sell dope. I'm not telling you to go pistol whip somebody and rob them. That's not what I'm saying. 
I hope you can get the fruit of this when I deliver it. So my mom became a drug dealer. My mother would go to a, a meeting to stay clean in the morning. Would go back out and sell drugs and go back to a meeting in the afternoon and go back out and sell drugs and go back to a meeting in the evening to go home. And I didn't understand it. But I was right by my mother's side. And let me tell you what that did for me this morning. Did God keep her? Yes, he did. He did. He kept her in her foolishness. He kept her. And guess what? God kept us. It's some things that you have done that you're not so you're not happy with. You're not going to even share it because it's a, it's a testimony that could bless somebody else. But you're not going to share it because you're embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed what my mom did. I'm not because you know what? I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. It wasn't so much of what she was doing. She had a focus on something that she wanted. And I'm taking, I'm going to take the, the, the fruit out of it. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to throw away all the other stuff. I'm just going to take the meat. Okay. And what, what it did for me was, is it let me know that guess what, Keisha, you, in order to get changed, you have to do something totally different and you have, to, it's going to be a risk. Everything is a risk. And sometimes we don't want, we want to stay in a safe place. If you want to start, if you want to launch a business, it's a risk. You're going to take risks. You're going to put money out there that you probably don't have. But what I'm saying to you about my mom, before I get into that, and then I'm getting ready to break it down to you. My mother had no one to turn to but God. And though it was the wrong decision that she made, he did keep her. He kept her. She almost went to jail and that's what stopped her. Come on, somebody. She almost went to jail at some point when she became greedy and, and, and she didn't know how to stop doing what she was doing because she became addicted to another behavior. She, she, she basically, she shipped, she, she transferred, um, what am I saying? She exchanged one behavior, addictive behavior for another addictive behavior. Come on, somebody. Woo, shit, can it see ya? But I can remember her prayer. Very, I can remember the prayer. She said, I ask you, God, to be able to get my children back, to be able to furnish my home, to be able to have the clothes and stuff that they need, and, and, and for me to have savings, for me to be able to go and uh, do a job that, that would be pleasing to you and when she had all of that best lady guess what my mother still wanted to sell dope you know why because she became addicted to the lifestyle she became addicted to fast money and God had to shut her down because she was not willing to do it herself are you hearing what I'm saying to you on tonight on this morning <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying I'm about to give you something amen so what am I saying I remember my mother getting ready to leave to go and make a transaction, and I begged my mom not to do it. Good morning, my brother. Please catch the replay. Please catch the replay, Eric. And um, I said, Mama, I don't think you are, I don't think you need to do it anymore. I see you, Kim. Please catch the replay. And she said, you just think you in control of something and you need to sit your little grown self down somewhere. Now she's become, you know, a uh, very aggressive with me. But my mother went out there to make that transaction and a police officer saw her and put her in the cop car. During this time, men couldn't search women. So when he put her in the car, he took her to the precinct for a woman to a uh, woman police to check her. And what I want you to know is she had stuffed the drugs in the seat and they didn't find anything on her. So then the woman said, do I need to search the car? And he said, no, it was no way that she could have put anything in the car. And my mother had to walk home. And when she came home and I looked at her face, I knew that the Lord had spared her life because she did not listen to me. And it wasn't so much she wasn't listening to me. She wasn't listening to God speak through me. 
Now, let me explain something to you why I'm sharing this with you. I was thinking about my mom and I was thinking about change. And I thought about, you know, sometime the risk of change. And sometimes it's change is very uncomfortable. As Bishop Dale C. Brana says, change is uncomfortable, but it's necessary. And, and we must make a change. And yes, it may be crazy to someone else. I'm not telling you to sell dope. Okay. I'm going to say that again. I'm not telling you to go rob anyone, but what I am telling you is sometimes what you see may be crazy to someone else because they don't understand it. They don't understand that you will go out there and take a thousand dollars and invest it in a building. They don't understand that you would, you know, go and buy these products. They just don't understand because God didn't give them the vision. He didn't give them the vision. All right. Did God give my mother that vision? I most certainly didn't. He did not tell her to go out there and sell drugs. But one thing I will say is he knew her heart was in the right place. And the one thing, Kim, I want you to know is God knows our heart. That's what he judges us by our heart. Now, do we do we have to do we have to um uh we do have to uh, give account on our uh actions. You know, the things that we do, oh, he holds he holds us accountable for it. So we will answer to those. But ultimately he judges us by the heart. Amen. So I wanted to say that as I was sitting there and I was look, looking at this lady's broadcast and I heard her say, make that change. And I was like, Ooh, Jesus. And I heard my mom and I could see my mother's, I could just see, you know, what we've been through. And I said, you know what, God, why am I sitting on my gifts? Why am I sitting on my gifts that you've given me and that you have given me a vision because I'm, 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 am I really afraid? Because I don't feel like I'm afraid, but am I really afraid? Are you afraid? Are you lazy? Are you, you know, what is holding you back from moving forward? Is it a, are you afraid to leap, take a leap of faith? Are you afraid? Do you feel like you're like me? You have to know every step, every step, every step. That is me. I always second guess myself. All right. And then if I get past that, guess what I'm doing? I need to know. I need to connect every dot. Every, well, God is not going to allow you to connect every dot. When it's a God's vision, your dots will not connect. Come on, somebody. Everything that you, if, the only way you can connect every dot, if it's your vision. If it's your vision, you can connect every dot. But when it's God's vision, when it's a mission that he's putting you on, he said, I'll be a lamp unto your feet. Meaning I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you see the next step, but I'm not going to allow you to see the entire staircase. I will let you see the next step. Am I right, Lorenzo? But I'm not going to let you see the entire staircase. And the, on, the main thing that my mother's story did for me was you cannot keep playing it safe. You cannot keep playing it safe, Shakisha. You have to ask for the sale. You have to get out there and just, just thrust yourself out there and say, God, for God, I live and for God, I die. And if I'm doing a God thing, I definitely should know that he's going to keep me. Come on, somebody. If he'll keep a woman, Shia, that was totally out of his will. Come on, somebody. Or out of alignment. Come on now. He allowed my mother. Shea, I see you, Tyreek. He allowed her to go in a direction that no one would have understood. Who? Shia. And guess what, you guys? I can remember being in a meeting with my mother and I can remember her standing up in front of all of these people that are in recovery and said, my name is Tracy and I'm an addict. They said, welcome, Tracy. She said, I need to testify and make a confession. I have been selling dope for the last six months. Today is where I decide to stop doing what I was doing. But if I had to do it all over again, I would do it again and again for my children. I said this woman crazy. Sister Colleen and brother Eric, she crazy, Lorenzo. Why are you standing in this place? <laughs> 
telling these folk you been selling drugs. They gonna lock you up. And you know what they said? Thanks for sharing, Tracy. Keep coming back. It works if you work it, but you got to work it every day and night. So guess what I'm saying to myself? Hello, world. I am author, evangelist, life coach, Shakisha Etnis. And in your response, you're saying, welcome. And guess what I'm saying? I'm about to step out on some show enough faith. And guess what? I, I, I know my father got me. I know he got me. I know he got me. And if he just be the lamp on my feet, I'm getting ready to have me a petrol walk this year. The rest of this year, I'm walking on, I'm having a petrol walk because I'm walk, walking on Peter's faith. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm going to take a Peter walk on today. Who shit? Can I never see ya? No one ever, no one thought they could walk on water. But because Peter said, Daddy, if it's you, come on, somebody. Tell me to come. He said, come. He didn't say, come, Peter. He said, come. Walk. Come. Come unto me. Hallelujah. And guess what? That is what I'm about to do. I said, Daddy, I, I thank you. I thank you for initiating. I'm having a petrol walk on a Peter's experience. Y'all better hear me on today. I'm going to walk on you, Jesus. And as long as I keep my eyes stayed on you, I know you got me. Because even when I decide to look back, he reached out and grabbed Peter from sinking. Come on, somebody. Even when my mother got off, got so caught up. Hallelujah. She got caught up and she got so, so uh, addicted to that lifestyle that when she took her eyes, uh, yeah, she can't the most see her. When she took her eyes off of God, he had to reach out and grab and let her know, I got you, but you got to stop this. You got to stop this. I see you, uh, Pastor Marco. Thank you for joining. You got to stop this. Sometimes God would allow us to get so close to death. Just for us to realize that he, that he is in control. My mother thought she was running things. Telling me I'm grown, but I was the one standing beside you selling drugs in the midnight hour. I was the one cutting the dope up and bagging it up. I was the one. And now you don't want to hear what I'm telling you, but God, but God, because not only did she risk her life, she risked mine. So what am I saying? If it's a God thing, you don't need to be connected with anybody that's not willing to risk with you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Lorenzo, he's a speaker. Lorenzo is a pastor. Lorenzo goes out and he 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 let God order his step. Now, if me and Lorenzo hooked up as partners, and I was like, well, no, nah, Lorenzo, I don't think I want to put I, I don't think I need you know what, Lorenzo? You need to leave me where I'm at because Lorenzo is doing the work. Come on, somebody. He's out there launching out in the deep. Hallelujah. So why would he want to connect uh, Miss Williams, Mr. Wh why would he want to connect Ovita with somebody that is trying to hold him into captivity? Somebody that's not willing to try. Y'all not hearing me on today. Who shit can it see ya? My mother had a partner. Who shit can it see ya? They say a partner in crime, but then my mother had a partner and we both had a protector. When we know that it's a God's thing, we got to know that he's going to he's going to protect us, Lorenzo. Pastor, who shit can it see ya? How you know about she ya? Pastor uh, Bradley, he, we got to know that we are partnered up with people that will hold us down. Come on, somebody. That will hold us down. That That's going to be our support system, Sister Carlene. My Jesus. How the love she ya? Woo, yeah, God. So I began to speak to myself. God said, encourage yourself. We looking for everybody else to encourage us. When the Lord said, encourage yourself, daughter. 
I need you to encourage yourself. So maybe what he was really doing, he was showing me something. Yeah, because he knows the way that I'm going to perceive it. He had to show me a memory that frightened me, but it also, come on somebody, show me my mother's faith factor. Ah, it was faith that she was really walking on. Yes, brother, we got to encourage ourselves. We have to encourage ourselves. Come on, somebody. Who shake it up? So I didn't come to glorify the enemy. I came to glorify my God because guess what? It's only by his grace and mercy that I'm not speaking to you from a jail cell. Come on, somebody. That I'm not speaking, that you're not speaking over my casket. And because I know my father has given me something and the mission and the vision is much greater than me. Come on, somebody. I know I can't do it alone, but if I have to, I need to because Peter was walking on water all by himself. Come on, somebody. But the direction that he was going into in his eyes, whoo, shit, can it see ya? How many of you guys say, Lord, oh, you say, I'm going to keep my eyes, uh, uh, uh. Ah, oh, Jesus, Lord God. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> uh, uh, what you say? The, my, my eyes are uh, Jesus from which cometh my help. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. I'm going to keep my eyes on my daddy because he is the one that's going to keep me. He's the one that's going to order my steps. He's the lamp unto my feet. Come on, somebody. He said I'm more than a conqueror. He said I can do all things through Christ Jesus. But he also said write the vision and make it plain. That, that, that he can run with the vision. That when they see it, Lorenzo, they can run with the vision. If it's not a vision written, how can I run with something that is not written plainly for me to understand? Because God's word says in all things get understanding in all things get understanding in all things get understanding encourage yourself you cannot eat on meat alone bread alone but by every word of God and some of us got too much word I'm sorry y'all mad at me some of us got too much word God said okay uh, uh, you need to start doing something you need to start doing something. Faith without work is what dead. Dead faith don't work. It's time for you to put muscles. Come on, somebody. Lorenzo is a is a is a uh Lorenzo said, so why you keep talking about me? <laughs> Lorenzo, he works out, right? Come on, somebody. He's a trainer. And, and guess what he have to do? He can't work out sitting there saying, Eric, you know, I'm a I'm a um, yeah, you know. I'm, um, he having a conversation with Eric and he's saying, yeah, Eric, you know, I'm great to lose this weight. I'm great to tone up and, you know, and yeah, I've been reading these books and boy, and the word of God just got me on fire and you still sitting there, but, bruh, you, Eric going to be like, well, I already got me two, a two pack. I'm trying to work on a six pack. You ain't even get your one. <laughs> you got to get out and make something happen. So it's time for us to put our work in progress. We have to work it, work it. What did I say? I said, they said it works if you work it. It works if you work it. This is what they said in the rooms. Oh, what rooms are you talking about? Eric, I'm talking about those rooms, Tabitha. I'm talking about those rooms of recovery. They said, keep coming back. It works if you work it. But you got to work it every day at night. Make it happen. Come on, somebody. Excellent, he says. Excellent. So guess what? I got to be about my business. Listen, I got to be about my father's business as well. But guess what? I have a business that I need to be being about because my father's saying, okay, listen, time waits for no one. You don't know tomorrow is promised to you. I allowed you to see today. That's why God say, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has its own worries because you don't know if you're going to even be here tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. When you look back over on, to, on, on yesterday, you know what you should be saying? When we look back at our past, come on somebody. The main thing that we should be saying is, Lord, thank you for getting me through it. 
Thank you that you got me through yesterday because I didn't see myself making it today. Not necessarily saying that I was going to take myself out, but it was so much going on in yesterday. I couldn't get out of yesterday quick enough. Come on, somebody. I hope you hear me on today. So with that being said, my mother's testimony blessed me. Blessed me because one, I was a part of the testimony. Come on, somebody. But it blessed me even more because I began to see her walk. See, I was walking with her. Am I talking to somebody? I was walking with her. It wasn't a vision I had. I just attached myself to her. Who are you attached to? What vision are you walking out? Who are you in partnership with? Who are you? Who is your spiritual? Come on, somebody. Who are who is your 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 uh, your, your, your prayer partner you know you partner up with people that you trust who is your accountability partner see I was holding my mother accountable for what she had prayed mama you said if you had $10,000 saved you said that if you got your apartment that you paid up for a year you said that if your kids had everything that they needed you said I mean this is what you said you have a house full of brand new furniture God gave you all of that I see you Pastor Marcus thank you for joining and you mean to tell me you're gonna risk all of what God had God did not have to keep you come on somebody who you're willing to risk all of what God has given you thank you for those thumbs up Pastor Marcus Thank you for gracing me with your presence on this morning. You're willing to risk all of what you had to risk your life for. Are you understand? Are you all getting this? This is the end. We're about to close. She risked. She took a risk, but now she's about to risk everything that she asked God to cover her and protect her for. Thank you for those likes and thumbs ups, Eric. I appreciate it. Are you hearing me? Who Mararaboshia? Faith. Let me make sure I can say this scripture right. Can I can I can I be honest with you guys? I need y'all to talk back to me real quick. I know some of you guys are at work. Just put in the just put in the comment section, be honest. I'm about to I'm about to be honest with you guys. I'm about to be honest with you guys. It's one scripture I never, ever, I, I didn't want to learn this scripture. I didn't want to learn this scripture. You would never catch me. <laughs> Thank you, sis, for the morning word. Thank you, brother, for receiving. You would never, never, sister Carleen, you would never hear me quoting this scripture. I never wanted to because I felt like I don't want, no. I'm going to tell you why and then we're out. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Did I say that correctly, Sister Carlene? Did I say that correctly, Lorenzo? Pastor Lorenzo, Pastor Marcus, Pastor Eric, <laughs> my brother. Did I say that correctly? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Did I say that correctly, Wantina? When I tell you, you're going to say, why would you not want that? Hello, hello, hello. Why would you not want to quote that scripture? Can I be honest with you, Pastor Lorenzo? I just learned that scripture yesterday. How about the day before yesterday? You know why, Lorenzo? Because I'm a person of truth. I need you to hear me. And, and Pastor Kirby Clemens he brought that thing for me last night. You don't hear me. He set me on fire because he understood my perspective. I said, you know what, God? Okay, I was talking to a friend on a couple of days ago. And I was sharing some things that I was going through with my children. Right? Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. I was screaming and dunking donuts. <laughs> They like, well, why are you not at church? I said, ooh, conviction. Ooh, conviction. Ooh, Lord Jesus. They said, what you watching? I said, church. Well, why are you here? Why are you not at church? I said, ooh, y'all really just hit me like that? 
<laughs> so here we go, y'all. Let's stay focused. Here we go. Here we go, Lorenzo. So I was talking to a friend about a situation that was dear to my heart, and it was about my son, right? And 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 they hit me with scripture, Sister Carlene, and that junk pissed me off. It really pissed me off. I'm like, look, man, this ain't the time to be spiritual, okay? I I don't need to hear all that. I I I'm talking about what's what's up, and 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 they hit me with the faith. Okay, let me tell you what I said. I was saying, he's a liar, he's a liar, he's a liar, he's a liar. He said, don't call him a liar again. And I said, man, whatever, he's a liar. He said, every time you say he's a liar, it makes me cringe. And I'm saying to myself, well, maybe you're a liar. <laughs> See, your flesh will get in the way. And people not going to tell y'all this, but this is real. Okay? I don't care how spiritual I am. I'm still living in a fleshly body. And sometimes it gets in my way. All right? But I was listening to the man. And what he said was this. This is what he said. He said, I was once a cheater. And I was with a woman that I was cheating with multiple women. But every time I would hear my woman on the phone talking to her friends, you know what she would say? I got a good man. I got a good man. I got a good man. My man is a good man. Oh, he's a good man. And every time I would hear her say that, it was conviction. Am I helping somebody? Because I told you I began to listen. And then he said, though I'm not with her today, what she implanted, she planted a seed of I was a good man. So at some point I had to line up with the seed because now I'm hearing, are you hearing me? Who? She planted a seed that I was good when I was actually bad. And then he hit me with the scripture. Faith is the things, faith is the, the, the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. And I'm like this on the phone. What else? <laughs> right? Right? And he said, every time I hear you say your son is a liar, it pisses me off because... I need you to say, even if, even if you want to say that that's what, you know, the truth. Cause I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, don't you always get upset when you text or call me and you say, how are you? And I say, I'm good. And then you come back and say, no, you're not. And I say, I'm good. Yes, I am. I said, okay, so now you want to hit me with faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen, but you're, you're pissing me off because that's what I say when I say I'm good. Sometimes I'm really not good, but I say it right. And guess what? As long as you don't call me and ask me what my problem is, I, I, I really do be good. So what I'm saying to you is let me flip it for you so you can understand what I'm saying, Sister Carlene and Pastor Lorenzo, before I lose you. Let me tell you what I'm saying. I said truth makes you free. The truth makes you free. So before I can even make myself hope for anything, I first have to deal with my truth. The truth is he lied to me. All right. Are you hearing me? I'm not trying to put my son on blast, but hey, y'all know our children has lied to us. He said, have you lied to your mom? I said, no, I was scared. I was too scared to lie to her. <laughs> I, I was scared out my, of my underwear to lie to my mom. But my point was, he said, even if you're going to say that, just say he was untruthful. All right. Are you, are you hearing me? Because see, sometimes, and, and I do believe that, call it what it is. I believe in that, Sister Carlene. But I did hear the man of God say, listen, sister, but, but I needed him to hear what I said. I said, listen to me, brother. I, I deal with truth. I deal with facts, okay? And I understand that I have faith. And I understand that, you know, I have to operate in that. But what I also know is the, the truth will, will set me free. 
It makes me free. I, I can't say that I don't deal with certain things and, and then make myself feel like, oh, no, oh, no, Lorenzo, no, no, no. My children are perfect children. They don't lie. They they don't do anything wrong. They don't miss, you know, no, they don't misbehave. No. Well, guess what? I got grown adult children, you know. But I'm sitting here and I said, wow, wow. But I had to let him also know I deal with truth. So on yesterday, I was able to listen to a man by the name of a uh, uh, pastor. I want to say his pastor, Pastor Kirby Clemens. And when I say he brought that word and, and he, 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 he dug in that word so good. And I mean, he broke it down in lamest terms, but he was so deep in it that it, 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 it made me when he said, listen, he said, listen, yeah, you got to have faith. Yes, you do. But you also got to deal with the truth. And sometimes the truth, it, it, you know, you need to know, you need to recognize that this is what's going on. Hello, somebody. So that set me free. It, it set me free. Because I'm like, I'm tired of people always hitting me with faith. This is substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Well, what about true? <laughs> what about true? Can we deal with the truth? <laughs> they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. And this is where I'm closing. You know how they go hand in hand? Because guess what? It may be true today. True. U-E. T-R-U-E. It may be true today that your finances aren't so great. True is not engraved as truth. Truth can't be changed. True can be changed. It's true that you may be 50 pounds overweight, but if you begin to lose weight, it's no longer true, right? True means it can be changed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you understanding me? Truth, truth. It is what it is. It's facts. It's engraved. Are you understanding? So it's true that my son lied, but it's not truth that he's a liar. Because if he began to change, it would no longer be true. Are you hearing me? Now, it's truth that Marcus is a man. It's truth that I am a woman that could never be changed. So I thank God because the man of, the man of God that spoke to me, he did get my attention in such a way that I said, okay, I won't run from this scripture anymore. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Ms. Jones, for joining. I won't run from this scripture anymore. Actually, I'm going to apply this scripture to my life on an everyday basis because I do know the truth and I am a person that stands by the truth because I do feel like the truth really makes me free. But guess what? I cannot make something true be truth. You hear me? It's true that we struggling today. We could be struggling, but that's what you don't have to focus on your struggle. You focus on your strength. Come on, somebody. You don't focus on the dead end. You focus on the U-turn coming out of the dead end situation. Come on, somebody. You don't focus on your hardship. Hallelujah. Yay, God. But you begin to focus on the higher call. Because guess what? It's always going to be friction when you're close to your destination, when you're doing what God has called you to do. When God is elevating you, it's going to be uncomfortable because you're not used to living on the ninth floor. You're used to uh, uh, doing everything on the second floor. You're not used to being in, in high school. You're used to being in middle school. So when you take a shift and the shift elevates you on a different level, things will be uncomfortable. When you go to school and you're going into a new, uh, when you go, when you go to college, I see you, Pastor Vivian. Thank you for joining. When you go to college, that's new territory for you. You're not going to have a teacher walking around you heading to a mean, excellent word. Love you. God bless you, man of God. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy your day. And, and, and you're not, you're not going to, um, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Love oh, My point is, I made a statement the other day 
Don't allow your past to handicap your future. Don't allow your past to handicap your future. Amen. Don't allow your past, Tendo, to handicap your future. Don't. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Tracy Russell, for that share. Oh, she shared a post. <laughs> I thought she shared a video. So I want to say thank you for joining off the evangelist like Coach Shakisha Edness. Do you have any questions before I chime out? Before I chime out, I will be coming by. You're going to see so much of me. I hope that you don't get tired of seeing me. All right. Because I'm about to launch out into the deep. I'm about to, you know, I mentor a lot of women behind the scenes that you have no idea what I do because I never share what I do. I never share with you all that I have products and services that can help you. I never, I never go in for that, but you know what? It's time that I make a change. I see you, uh, Lorraine, L oh, I can't never say it. James, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Lerone James, thank you for joining. Never not receiving prints when you want. Never not receiving prints. I don't know. I'm sorry. I probably don't understand. It's such a blessing. Step out. It's your time. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Father God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for each and every one of us that has come together. Lord God, thank you for those that will catch the replay. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for this blessing being a seed, Lord God, and in, in some cases watering the seed of someone else's, Lord God. And just thank you, Lord God, for bringing an increase, increase in us. Oh, increase in our territories, giving us the responsibilities that we can handle, Lord God. You said that you would never put more on us than we can bear, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, but you said that you will give us the desires of our heart and we delight ourselves in you, Lord God. And you said that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and your glory. So we thank you. You said cast all our cares upon you, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said that we are overcomers. You said that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the and the sharing of our testimony. So Lord God, I did So God, I thank you for taking this testimony, Lord God, and blessing someone else to help them overcome because the blood already been shed. Lord God, so my testimony along with the blood, Lord God, should help them overcome many obstacles and circumstances that they are dealing with on today, Lord God. We lift up those, hallelujah, that have lost loved ones. I lift up the Riley family, Lord God. I lift up the Inslee family, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I continue to lift up my sister, Letitia Steele, Lord God, in the passing of her son, and just so many people that are grieving, Lord God, grieving a loss, grieving a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, a loss of friends, Lord God, just a loss, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for being their comforter, Lord, I thank you for being their keeper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Whoo, shake it up, see ya. So I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for for just trusting the God in me. You know, it's not me. Hello, my father, Eric. Hello, my pops, Eric. <laughs> you all gotta you all gotta know I, I adopt people all the time on here. And Eric Heilick, uh with marriage can win. I adopted him and his wife as my mother and father. And they probably ain't too much older than me. <laughs> but their spirits are, are truly in a good place. And their hearts has always been open to the people. So I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Please catch the replay. Please share it out. I absolutely thank each and every one of you. And I thank God for you. Thank you and God bless.